welcome to Maison Mission. My name is Miranda, and I'm glad that you're here today. Maison is a Greek word that means greater, and Maison Mission is all about creating greater spaces for people to hear and experience the good news of Jesus. On our screen, you'll find a QR code for our digital connect card. We'd love for you to fill it out. We have some event signups, prayer requests, or even just say hello to us. One other thing for you to know is on Sunday nights, Maison is meeting on campus. There will be groups, kids, students. Invite people out. Come see us. On Sunday, February 12th, there happens to be this big sporting event. Um, and so we're going to have a Super Bowl party here on campus at 5 p.m. Bring an item for our care kits. We'd like to collect some soft food, canned food, clothing, toiletries, or anything that you think others might need. On our screen, you'll also see a link for giving. You can give online at maisonmission.com. You can also text to give. Text the dollar amount to 84321, or you can mail us a check. Today, we have our worship pastor, Wilson Stern, with us. He will be continuing our series, Plug In. We've made it to the second segment of our four-part series, Plug In. We've talked about how we can spend our time in a way that deepens our trust in God, not just our trust in institutions. Last week, we saw how a relationship with the divine can be difficult at times, or make us feel doubtful, especially when the systems we trust with our faith fail us. But turning our attention directly to God allows us to see opportunities to transcend church and religion to reach the real people around us with love and compassion. This week, we're talking about the unique talents God has given each of us. We are all presented with special gifts, and each of us can serve our community in a different way. Some of these gifts are spiritual, some are physical, and some are practical. They bear the signature of God's image, in which we are all carefully made. Exploring our God-given abilities and developing them in the name of Christ is another way of deepening our trust in God. It can be uncomfortable or awkward to nurture a budding skill, even more so if we are searching for some kind of spiritual payoff. But in confronting this discomfort, we realize more fully our need for God. In the moments when we feel vulnerable or doubtful, the grace available to us through prayer is immeasurable. Through Christ, God allows us to be made new over and over again. I've personally seen this to be true, both in churches and in places one would never expect to feel divine grace. Using my talents to glorify God is how I got through some of the worst times in my life. In 2018, I experienced personal loss at a level yet unknown to me. In the course of a year, I lost a job, a church, a relationship, and a place to live. I was struggling to keep my head above water. My mental health was a daily struggle. But the special solitude in which I listened to worship music during this time was where I healed from the loss and began to grow. I had memories tied to certain worship songs that came back in a flash any time I heard them. Memories of the whole congregation joined in song, agreeing on a positive, unifying message. I felt accomplished for having served on a worship team, and like I had been a part of something greater. I had been present for countless tearful altar calls and witnessed so much grace thanks to my time there. I moved states, left that relationship, found multiple new jobs, and eventually found this church, fueled by the memories I made while using my talents to glorify God. Some of my most impactful experiences with worship have been in evangelical spaces that were not open and affirming. I personally believe that spiritual music making is a divine gift that allows us to cross barriers of culture and prejudice. I felt very conflicted in those spaces, but I was granted a deeper perspective in the space of worship music. 
I disagreed with these people, but engagement and worship with them made me love them. I wouldn't have been accepted if they knew my identity, but in worship I was reminded of the body of Christ and all its unique parts. We are all made in a perfect way to help one another, and no single part of the whole can say it doesn't need the other parts. Now, I'm able to use what I learned there to make worship engaging and spiritually fulfilling in affirming spaces like this. As a queer person with a spiritually diverse background, I couldn't fully be myself in evangelical spaces. I had to develop my own relationship with Christ, because I couldn't be open with the pastors I knew. Using my talents was the way I did that. During worship, the problematic parts of church are subdued. We can all access our own spiritual centers for ourselves. Worship music was my refuge when I felt doubtful and excluded. I want to encourage us to explore new ways to use our talents, because it empowers us to build new structures in our hearts that don't depend on an outside influence. God gave you your talents, not the church. The people around us might be making the wrong choice. The institutions we trust may let us down. But in recognizing the special mark of divine creation imprinted on all of us, we strip away the artifice to leave an honest, direct relationship with God. In 1 Corinthians, the author tells us why we are given special talents. It reads like this. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same Spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same Spirit gives great faith to another, and to someone else, the one Spirit gives the gift of healing. He gives one person the power to perform miracles, and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to discern whether a message is from the Spirit of God or from another spirit. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages, while another is given the ability to interpret what is being said. It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. It goes on to talk about the relationship we have to all other people as creations of God. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. The individual parts of the body of Christ need each other. Without any single member, it would be incomplete. Furthermore, the parts are intimately designed to serve one another. Do you have a talent that no one else has? Or is there something about your faith that could help others in crisis? Your talents might not just be helpful to others, they could be transformative. In Psalm 139, the psalmist thanks God for taking care in creating humanity. It reads like this. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. There is a tenderness with which we are all created. Each one of us is a bundle of miracles with a unique story. God knows that story intricately and knows all the paths available to you. To live into our blessings is to honor the gift of life. You honor God in Christ's name when you find out what you are good at and do it in service of others. Showing the world around you the beauty of your own creation honors all of creation. 
In 1 Peter, the author encourages the reader to use all divinely granted gifts for the glory of God. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. Then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to him forever and ever. Amen. Some of us have gifts like these, speaking and helping others. Maybe you're a gifted public speaker. Yes, you can use your oratory skills to give a guest sermon. Yes, you can use your penchant for organization on the church cabinet. But you can also glorify God by using these skills in the lay world. Do these things with all the strength and energy God supplies, and your actions in the real world can glorify God too. We can shine God's light on others by doing everyday things with Christ in our hearts. The good you sow into your family and co-workers grows and is redoubled. There's one more passage I'd like to share with you, and it's a parable of Jesus found in the book of Matthew. In the parable of the three servants, Jesus instructs us about how to treat the gifts we are given by God. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of man going on a long trip. It goes like this. The man leaves money with his three servants. One servant invests the money and makes a large return. The next goes to work and doubles the money he is given. Both these servants are praised on the master's return. The third servant, who buries the money and then has only the original amount to show, is rebuked. He is sent to the outer darkness, where there is weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Here, we see there are consequences when we fail to invest our talents back into the world. Not only is it praiseworthy to cultivate our talents to glorify God, but bad things can happen when we bury our talents in the ground. Have you been hiding a talent from the world? You might be caught up in self-doubt, but your community might be suffering without you. Perfectionism might be paralyzing you when an imperfect person might just be right for the job. God does love to use the broken. Thanks to worship music, I was able to get through the times on my faith journey that I felt totally unwanted. Ultimately, it landed me at FCC, where I am radically accepted and loved. It's my belief that people can magnetize themselves to that kind of love by working on their skills and getting involved. Answering the call to use my skills in music to do music ministry has taken me on a journey I could never have predicted. Worship music introduced me to the profound emotional healing power of the arts, as well as their ability to break down barriers of belief and prejudice. It gave me solid mooring when my world was coming apart. It allowed me a place to recenter and rebuild. Now, it is one of my main ways of interfacing with the world around me. I am eternally grateful for what music ministry has done and continues to do in my life. Using and exploring our talents in the name of God's glory can allow us to work beyond the confines of the church, denomination, politics, and beliefs. To study oneself in this way is to let God's unique mark on us be seen. It can make us feel plugged into a community. It can get us through the hard times. It can help us forgive radically. Sometimes, it can keep us from the harm caused by depriving the community of the good work we could do. Even if you don't jump right out of this talk and go volunteer for a service day or take a church cabinet position, I pray that you will take stock of your unique blessings. It is my hope for you that you will do all things with gladness and with a sense of purpose. This is because you were made in God's image, on purpose, with a special reason for being. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the miracle of your creation, and we ask that you show us the way to use your talents best to serve you. God, we know that even in the smallest ways, we can show your love to others and bring your grace to others. We ask that you help us reframe our lives to put you in the center as the reason for our efforts. We thank you for the blessings you put in our lives and wish only to make our gratitude known to you. 
Amen.